So hi, Daddy. How are you? Hello, I'm very good. So how is everything going? Because you had yesterday your second rehearsal. Yeah, everything's going good. It's going according to plan. Hmm, what's the plan, Daddy? To have a good time in Eurovision. Sir, you were one of the favorites last year. Uh, we're thinking about themes. This year, maybe you weren't on the top three of the favorites uh, all the time, but after you came to Rotterdam, everybody is seeming to really enjoy and growing again with the expectation for the performance on, on Thursday. Not everybody has the opportunity to see, but uh, the people that see it uh, see, say that it's a really interesting performance. It's like a very colorful, very joyful. So how would you explain to the people the performance that you're doing? Say that it's very joyful and, and colorful. Like we're, <laughs> This is our um, third song and like fourth performance as this group. So we have like developed our own performance style, I think. And, and this time we're we're taking, taking all of the things that we've been collecting into our performances over the years and combining it into one uh, glorious Eurovision <laughs> moment. I wanna, I wanna ask you about uh, the performance, but uh, basically at the end of the performance, when the pyrotechnic ends up and uh, everybody gets scared while you are posing for whole Europe. How did this idea come about? That idea of end with a lot of a lot of pyro and having a scare. Uh, we didn't have any pyro uh, yet, so we we of course need to have some pyro since we are in Eurovision. Then <laughs> we need pyro, just like we need a um, wind machine, and also we need to wiggle our butts. Um, but. This idea came because the song is just two minutes and 45 seconds or something like that. Right. And you, we have three minutes to do the performance. So we wanted to use our whole three minutes and, and not uh, leave the stage before our three, three minutes are over. So, so we decided to, to bye, prolong bye. the end a little bit. So you've told before that the performance is like a combination from the past Two performances that you had with the with the group, the one from 2017 uh, and the one from 2020. Uh, how was this a story developing? How does the both the stories combine? The story from the performance and the story from the three uh, three songs. They don't really combine <laughs> that much. Like the the lyrics are totally different from what we're doing on stage. But that's also because uh, we are a group. Like we're. It's not me singing to uh, my wife when I'm on stage. Like, yeah, I, the lyrics are that, but our performance is a group effort. Like, it's all of us performing together. It's not about me or her. It's about us as a group. How is the bubble? All those uh, security measures you are living in Eurovision. I suppose it could be a very strange situation right now. Yeah, it is. Like one of the things that I was most excited about was uh, to connect with the other uh, participants, and and now we are not really supposed to interact too much, and even like meeting them in the arena is like, mm -hmm. do I do I come and talk to you or do I hold, take my distance or like? And of course you're gonna go and uh, at least. Uh, mingle a little bit, but there's, it's always in the, the back of your mind. It's like, ah, we shouldn't be doing this. I suppose you share a hotel probably with another delegations? Yeah, we're with uh, Romania, Malta and Poland. It's like it's like you want to to stay with someone in the elevator, suppose, or something like that, you know, like, hi, a little yeah. bit of, of cheating, no? I mean, we try to be as careful as we can, but I mean, we're in the same hotel, so... The, the next performance that you're doing is uh, the one from the jury, no, for the main rehearsals of the show, uh, because the, the individual rehearsals are, are done. So, anything that you're doing to be prepared about it? You just want to chill and relax uh, from, from these days? Something prepared? Um, I'm gonna edit a video of how me and my wife and her dad made uh, the instruments for this performance. I'm gonna do uh, two covers with Sigrun and Hilda, the backing singers of, of the Gagnamande. 
we're right after this we're gonna do some uh, run through the, the act one more time or a few more times and probably we're gonna do that again before Wednesday we have a boat ride I think tomorrow and the day after that there's like a red carpet event that I'm not completely sure how it's gonna be because I think we're just gonna go walk on the red carpet and take some pictures and then go back to the hotel <laughs> and uh, then a bunch of interviews and yeah so no uh, I'm gonna relax as much as I can but uh, there's also a lot to do. So Daddy Frey we, we know you're in the middle of the of this chaos that we call Eurovision and we're really thankful that you and your team managed to give us some time some free time so to, to talk about to talk about your duration and your experience because also and this is the one with i wanted to conclude this interview we're really happy to talk with the icelandic representative because our main song the song that we chose uh, for our podcast to begin and end the the podcast is one from iceland okay. uh, and also we re it reminds the the performance what, uh, what we've seen from the performance of you uh, have little elements from it uh, which is Uh, 2014 song, uh, no prejudice, no prejudice. Yeah. So we're really happy to have the Islamic delegation. We had in the, the, cool. the documentary with 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 Felix. Now we are having Daddy Frey. We're really happy to have this Islamic connection. Awesome. So Daddy Frey, thank you so much for having this few moments, few minutes with us. Thank you.